Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Denon PMA 600 NE amplifier. The amplifier was released in 2022 and it's a current amplifier so if you were looking to buy this product then you know you can you can source it new. In terms of general specifications the power output uh, power output RMS is 4 45 watts per channel and that delivers into an 8 ohm load and if you're connecting 4 ohm speakers then that will increase to 70 watts per channel and then total harmonic distortion is 0.01 percent with 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz and the frequency response from the amplifier is 50 hertz up to 100 kilohertz and you can also connect directly to it a moving magnet type RCA input from a turntable and that is at 2.5 millivolts and for all of your analog line connections your input sensitivity then in maximum is 100 millivolts with this amplifier what Denon have also done is they provided a subwoofer output and that has um, terminals on the rear of the amplifier you also have the record output as well so you can input signal it could be analog or it could be a digital and then you can choose then to connect that up to some form of a recording device as is typical with all of these types of amplifiers you have a quarter inch jack on the front so if you want to do personal listening if you wish you can just switch off the speakers and then connect your headphones to it it also has the direct mode and I've sort of spoken about this before this is where if you wish you can buy it bypass the tone circuits so when you think about your balance control bass and treble if you bypass those just hit that tone mode button on the front and then because the amplifier really is two modes so you can have conventional analog uh, but there's also a push button on the front where you can select between analog mode and then digital mode so when we talk about digital mode when you look from the back of the amplifier you have a 24-bit DAC um, board but it's like a complete module and you sort of see this later on because it's in a metalized case and then plugs directly into the main circuit board and it's locked in place not only from the rear fixing screws but also there's two self-tapping screws where the bracket sort of connects and it supports three inputs so you have conventional coax and then you have optical one and then also optical two and it also supports bluetooth with version 4.2 and then dimensions wise uh, height is 122 millimeters and that would include the feet as you can see here just on this overview picture and then for the width of the amplifier that goes to 434 millimeters and then finally the depth is 307 and then overall weight <coughs> comes in at 7.4 kilograms now when you purchase the amplifier of course it will also come with a full featured remote control and this is the sort of common remote control that you see with the Denon PMA series so anything really that you can do from the front fascia of the amplifier you can do that via the, re the remote control so really what was the sort of the issue with this and this is the first one that I've seen through the workshop um, you don't sort of tend to expect sort of amplifiers maybe a couple of years old or slightly less um, to come in I do see power amplifiers but that tends to be more manufacturing type issues where this was an actual failure of, of the unit so from a user point of view when they connected up the power connected to the rear and then try to initialize the amplifier from the front push button what you would hear is just a small low level click and then the amplifier would then effectively switch to protection mode and then you have the power LED then which would just be blinking uh, red collar now I've seen these types of faults on some of the other PMA earlier series so when I think about that I'm thinking say for example the 720 AE series and I was a little bit disappointed in terms of what I actually discovered and I'm, I'm showing this in the video so the first thing that I always check is just the incoming supply and I'm just looking down I sort of show this where you have the fuse and the fuse was not blackened or anything like that so that told me that there hadn't been excess current being drawn um, so I wasn't looking for a fault you know maybe in the output stage or maybe in, in the sort of the, the power supply section but the issue itself was in the power supply section because as I'm showing here I just simply use the multimeter then just on resistance and I'm measuring the primary winding of the transformer 
and the winding was open circuit. So that tells me that the internal thermal protection fuse has failed. So when you think, you know, it's sort of 2023 now, you know, this amplifier hasn't been in service for very long. I think what's also a little bit more concerning is the cost. So when I say, well, the amplifier retails in the UK are £350 or slightly less, the transformer kind of comes in a quite an eye-watering sum of money. So including tax and shipping, the transformer retails at £94.20. So, you know, I've sort of spoken about this before, you know, so I never quite do understand why manufacturers feel the need to provide a spare part at such a very, very high price. But that's what it is. And then simply by replacing the uh, the main power transformer, of course, the amplifier then is back operational. So, as I said, this is the first one that I've seen through the workshop. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to see, you know, many more with this sort of issue. But on the other series of amplifiers, like the 720 series and the 520, you know, I do have a toroidal transformer, which is an equivalent to the conventional, what we call EI type transformer, which is fitted here. So what I've also done as well, and this is something else which is kind of important for people who may be looking to obtain a service manual for the amplifier, currently you cannot. If you approach any of the authorised service agents, what they will politely tell you is that they're not allowed to share the intellectual property. And if you want to make a request for a service manual, what you need to do is to refer back to the brand owner and that is Sound United. So again, if you did a Google search, you'll come up with Sound United and you'll also see that they hold or they are owners then of many other brands, including Denon. So you sort of no service manual, high cost of a replacement part like a transformer um, on an amplifier, which is you know less than a couple of years old. So there you sort of have it. So what I've sort of took the time to do as well, and this is sort of shared throughout the video, I've just took a series of photographs just to give you some insight. So you can see the power supply section. I'm also sharing with you as well the startup power supply, and it's not dissimilar to the 720 series. I appreciate the main board has a redesign because it's taking care not just as a conventional analog amplifier, but also as a digital amplifier. But what I also did as well was I just removed the digital uh, module from the amp. And the reason for that is that I can then give you insight and take a photograph of what the main board looks like. And you can see the preset potentiometers on there, also the output stage and the sort of regulates. Well, what's sort of interesting as well is that the uh, voltage regulators are manufactured by the Korean Radio Corporation. Um, Again, these sort of regulators, you know, I've seen in, in other amplifiers, so it's really a, a common component source there. And then, of course, I'm also sharing the back of the amplifier where you can see the subwoofer connection and then you can also see the record out and then the rear of the digital module uh, and where you would then connect your optical or your um, coax connection. Then, So really just a series of photographs, as I say, not complicated this repair. But again, giving you some uh, degree of insight. Um, but uh, yeah, interesting. That's how I'd kind of term this repair. So that sort of brings us to an end. Uh, I do appreciate you stopping by. And again, if you have any sort of questions or queries or you need any support yourself, by all means, just email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com. And I'll be very happy to come back to you and provide any sort of support that you may require. So, wishing you all the best. Until the next time, cheers. Bye-bye.